I'm Kyle Whitmire and this is John Archibald from AL.com. Today we have uh, been sitting outside uh, Alabama Ethics Commission a meeting uh, where they were hearing uh, evidence and testimony uh, about Governor Robert Bentley and that commission uh, came to a decision tonight to refer charges uh, to the Montgomery County District Attorney. Uh, John, uh, what does this mean for uh, Governor Bentley? It was, a, it was a brutal day for everybody, but it was a real kick in the uh, gut for Bentley. Uh, he, uh, first of all, witnesses, we believe, that Spencer Collier, his former bodyguard, Ray Lewis, some of his former campaign workers, uh, came and testified today. And, and he found it serious enough that he himself had to come uh, to, uh, to testify himself, which was a surprise to a lot of people. And although he tried to, <laughs> to slink away, he tried to be, see, be unseen from the look on his face when he left. Uh, he clearly knows how serious it is. It was an interesting show. Just so sitting on the sidewalk, you know, watching his security try to block the view of the governor get, you know, coming out of uh, the RSA building, uh, RSA Union building here where the meeting was being held, getting back into an SUV to go all of one block to the state capitol. Uh, he certainly did not want to be seen. It didn't didn't work. Uh, but you know, the this is, I think, a huge moment, not just for the, uh, for the governor. I mean, what, this, is, this is very serious for him, obviously. This means that uh, he could, will likely now be, be prosecuted for what, uh, well, he faces, four felonies? He faces four felonies, four Class B felonies, two violations of the State Fair Campaign Practices Act for, for campaign violations, and two uh, ethics violations. Uh, those are serious things that carry up to 20 years in prison and, and large fines if convicted. Uh, and uh, don't forget that it, it is not the only investigation that's, that Ben is looking at. In two days, the, uh, the House Judiciary Committee is, is supposed to release its report from its investigator, which will outline perhaps a whole different set of charges. So it's a bad week for the governor, and he seems to know it. But there's something important that happened tonight, and I, I, I think we shouldn't miss it. Uh, this decision doesn't just have an impact on Governor Bentley. Uh, some of these charges are related to Fair Campaign Practice Act violations, which that's, uh, those are the laws that regulate how politicians uh, can raise campaign money, borrow campaign money, and spend campaign money. And three of these four charges were related to how the governor used his campaign funds. Uh, one, we believe, is related to uh, a reimbursement that he got uh, for a trip that he took to Las Vegas with Rebecca Mason and others, uh, that he got that money from the Republican Governors Association, but the law is very explicit. It says there's a window in which you can put, you can take money from someone else and put it in your account. That money came outside that window. Uh, the law also uh, says that uh, you can only, and this is this is the hard line that the commission is taking, that you can only put money in your account if you are a candidate. Uh, he, the governor put $50,000 of his own money into his account, but he did so uh, when he's been term limited. He can't be a candidate for governor anymore. Uh, so one of the charges was related to that. And then you had a, a, a third charge that was related to how he spent the money uh, paying for some of Rebecca uh, Caldwell Mason's legal fees. And they said there's reason there to believe that uh, he had broken the law when he used his campaign funds to pay for those legal fees mm -hmm. because they're not in the regular course of, of, of duties for, for his office. And we should be clear here on this fourth charge, the ethics violation, they don't outline exactly what that is. They essentially said he did use his office uh, for... Uh, he used public equipment uh, or people uh, for his own personal reasons, and that we believe is in the uh, while trying to essentially cover up for what we know now as the Rebecca Mason affair uh, or relationship. Um, but it should be clear that none of these violations are related to are specifically because he had an affair. They're not right. sex related. This is about using his power and his office to do things he has no business doing, and this is about campaign violations, which are finally, it seems like, being considered as important violations by the Ethics Commission. What's next, guys? What happens next?
What happens next? Well, we have the, uh, of course, the House Judiciary Committee gets underway Friday. That starts the schedule of impeachment. This will give the, the House uh, real energy, I think, to move forward with impeachment. If they had said no charges, I think they could have stagnated and maybe even died there. We have to also remember that the, the Attorney General already has an ongoing investigation about this. It's just piling on one after another after another. And, you know, we could have a new governor by the uh, middle of uh, summer. What did you make of these charges being referred? Because the, the, the Ethics Commission has a choice of who to refer uh, these, these cases to, either the AG or the appropriate district attorney, in this case, district attorney in Montgomery. They send it to the district attorney. What do you make of that? Well, you know, I think it's very interesting. Number one, maybe sending it to the attorney general would be redundant because, as I said, they do have an ongoing inv investigation, and they've appointed former district attorney of Montgomery to lead that uh, so that the attorney general himself wouldn't have to be involved. Um, uh, but let's, let's remember what's happened with the AG's office, though. I mean, maybe I'm reading something into this here that's not there, but we had all this business with Luther Strange. The governor appointed Luther Strange to the U.S. Senate. He uh, appointed Strange's replacement. Uh, is this a sort of a vote of no confidence in the in the Attorney General's office? I don't really think it is. I think it's procedural. Okay. Uh, it, it could be, but uh, I, I think uh, I think it's a matter of having other eyes on it. Well, thank you for joining us. It's been a long day here in Montgomery, and uh, we're going to head back to Birmingham and have something for you tomorrow on AL.com.